He weighs 143 and one half pounds, wearing the white trunks with black letters. He's from Lowell, Massachusetts, and is undefeated in three consecutive bouts as a professional, all three by knockout victory. Let's hear it for Mickey Ward. And his opponent in the blue corner. Wearing the blue trunks with white trim, he weighs 146 and three quarter pounds from New York City, New York. His professional record is four victories, 10 defeats, and three draws. Ladies and gentlemen, the People's Express, Mike People. Mike Peoples, the People's Express, does that mean you have to pay for goodies when you go to his training camp? Or you just does not offer them? It's a no frills career, no. without <laughs> doubt. <laughs> What'd you do that means you're straight, man? I'll tell you, Dave. All right, let's, let's make you Ward, who I mentioned came in here at 3-0. Brother of Dick Eklund, a very fine fighter in his day. And that is the People's Express, Mike Peoples. Comes in here with a 4-10-3 record. I mentioned we saw Ward before on January 10th. He beat Chris Bajor here in Atlantic City just a couple of weeks ago. And looked good in doing it. Showed himself as a prospect. Good power, as you saw there with that hand speed, the jab and the quick right hand behind it. I mentioned his brother Dick Eklund, and uh, for those of you who have never seen Dick Eklund fight, we've had him several times on ESPN in the past, fought Sugar Ray Leonard once, went 10 rounds with Leonard. Very slick boxer, and you can see lots of his moves in uh, Chris Ward, or Mickey Ward, excuse me. The only difference, I think, is Mickey Ward probably is going to hit with a lot more power than Eklund did. That's a good point. Probably will. You can tell it's a right hand now. The way it follows the left hand in perfect sequence, and speed can create power, which he has been able to do. Now, Mike Peoples is a fighter who uh, likes to switch back and forth from righty to southpaw. Right now, he is content to stay as a right-hander. And uh, he comes in here off a couple of wins, beating Ray Daniels uh, in December, and then over six rounds beating Patrick Lyons January 8th here in Atlantic City. And he thinks he's improved a lot in the last couple of months as a fighter. He's been a street performer. Lose three in a row, win three in a row, come back. And he has talked about taking it more seriously, dedicating himself better to training, getting rid of anxieties surrounding his career. He's a 24-year-old, Mike Peoples, and he saw Ward fight Bajor, and he wasn't that impressed, but those left hooks to the body have got to be impressive. Mickey Ward showing you lots in his offensive arsenal so far in this first round. And a nice defensive maneuver, too, as he spun away from a would-be right hand. Well, if he's being tutored as he is by Dick Eklund, defense will be a part of it because Eklund was a very fine defensive fighter. And what we see him trying to do also is the switching from the defense right to the offense. It gets mixed in there a little bit as he took a good right there to the cover. Mike Peoples switching his attack downstairs for one of the first times. A half minute left to go in round one. This one is scheduled for four. Mickey Ward in the white trunks. He's had a pretty good first round of it, but Mike Peoples has been there and not showing any signs of backing up. So round one comes to a conclusion, and this is shaping up as a good one. Turn for round two of this welterweight matchup between Mickey Ward and the White Trunks. And in the blue trunks, it's Mike Peoples. Peoples from New York with an unimposing 4-10 and 3 record. And Mickey Ward at 3-0. and But Mike Peoples is uh, staying in there with Ward thus far. His edge with that, he has been in more fights as a pro and would try to call on some experience. He did land a good right hand to open this round. Here you see that quickness by Ward, the quick jab and then circling. 
Mickey Ward is uh, showing us some pretty good lateral movements, so Mike Peoples very purposeful in his stalking. He has wasted little motion. And you see some of the wildness of people. There's a counter right hand. That left hook would have been fine if he could have thrown a right to the body beforehand. A little extracurricular activity on the inside. Steve Smoker warns both fighters, but uh, they were they had one hand free each of them and they were using it. Dave, would you say that Mickey Ward underuses his jab? It seems like when he uses that punch, he's effective, but I, I feel like when he stops using it, he gets in with those wild left hooks and he's not as effective. I think it's out of his element, too, so, yes. He should be using it more. He's also being hit with the counter right over his hand when he doesn't use it. It's down at the bottom now. And of course the point you also like to make, it, he's got a very good jab to use. The speed, it's got snap. And it sets everything else up too. It sets everything else up. A minute left to go here in round two. This one is scheduled to go for Mickey Ward in the white trunks against Mike Peoples, who for the first time has switched to softball as we warned you he might do. And why do you think he did that when the lead, when the counter right hand was getting in? He turned the power right hand into a lead right hand. Perhaps a strange timing to do it. And we'll see if it works. Steve Smoker warning people for hitting on the break. Mickey Ward getting him with a headlock. Half a minute left to go in the second round. We're trying to land the stray right now as Peoples has turned to softball, giving him a different look. Round two is history. what they're saying in the Mickey Ward's corner. What we can listen to, that is. Dick Eklund talking to him. Yeah. I don't think he liked the impression of himself that he saw.